The University of the Free State is one of the oldest higher education institutions in South Africa. Established in 1904, we produce sought-after undergraduate and postgraduate students in seven faculties across three campuses in Bloemfontein and in Kwakwa in the Eastern Free State. We create opportunities and growth through leading learning and teaching, focused research and impactful engagement with society. Situated in the heart of South Africa, our character of caring and diversity translates into an outstanding university experience. Most distinguished graduates and participants, by virtue of the power vested in me as Chancellor, I hereby constitute this congregation of the University of the Free State for the awarding and conferral of qualifications in the faculties of Economic and Management Sciences, Education, the Humanities, and Natural and Agricultural Sciences. I therefore award and confer qualifications on all the candidates presented to this congregation. In addition, I hereby award and confer qualifications on those whose name appear in the program. Welcome to the virtual graduation ceremony of the University of the Free State. A special word of welcome to the members of the University Management and our Chancellor, Professor Bunang Mohale, who are part of the ceremony. Congratulations to Dr. Sipu Pitiyana, who will be awarded an honorary doctorate during the ceremony. Dr. Pitiyana is a well-known and respected leader who has transformed the business scene in South Africa. We are honoured to confer this degree upon him. This is our fourth virtual graduation ceremony and we remain humbled and inspired by your grit and courage to push forward in this new extraordinary world. Although you may have felt uncertain about the future at times, you refuse to give up and instead, you boldly crafted your own destiny. I look forward to seeing you grow into the leaders of tomorrow. I know the world will be a better place with your input and contribution. Over the past year, each one of us had many similar and also many unique challenges. But today, we unite in celebrating each and every one of you. We only see winners. I admire your resilience. We can all learn a lot from you. It would have been easy to quit, but you chose not to. And we are extremely proud of you. At the University of the Free State, we understand that the modern world requires graduates with more than just a qualification. That is why we invest extra time and resources in teaching you the skills and values needed to survive and thrive in our new world. The first one is critical inquiry. Throughout your studies, we encourage you to engage with your course content, to investigate the facts, understand it, and also perhaps challenge it. Critical thinkers are sought after. People who are prepared to see things differently and are excelling globally. Be one of them. Secondly, appreciate the people around you. We need each other. 
Society is dependent on the supportive interaction of its members to survive and ultimately thrive. And lastly, mind yourself. Integrity is the biggest gift you can give yourself as well as those around you. Go into the world and make the difference you were born for. You have all the knowledge, skills and values you need. Use the platform you have. Enjoy your graduation ceremony. Congratulations. Bye Gelik. Ria Le Lebuisa. Justice Zakaria Mohammed, Zak Yakub, is a retired justice of the Constitutional Court of South Africa. He became blind at the age of 16 months after contracting meningitis, matriculated at Arthur Blackshall School for the Blind, and after completing an NLB degree at the University of Durban Westville, practiced as an advocate for 25 years. Justice Yacoub's participation in the struggle for democracy, founded on community work and mobilization, started with the underground movement of the ANC while at university and continued until adoption of the country's new constitutional dispensation. He was a member of the Fundamental Rights Committee that helped with the preparation of the Bill of Rights in South Africa's interim constitution, of the Independent Electoral Commission responsible for ensuring that the first democratic elections in 1994 were free and fair, and of the panel of experts appointed by the Constitutional Assembly to advise during negotiations for and the drafting of the final constitution. Justice Yacoub has adjudicated in national and international tribunals and taught at law schools in and outside the country. The University of the Free State will confer the Doctor of Laws honoris causa upon Justice Yacoub on 22nd April 2021. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly, students, I wholeheartedly and warmly congratulate each and every student who graduates with me this year and emphasize that your degree is more real and important than mine can ever be because your laudable qualification is the result of hard work, sweat and tears. This does not at all mean that I value uh, the honor conferred upon me any the less. Your parents and loved ones who have supported you also deserve to be applauded, perhaps more than you are. And I salute them. All students will leave a learning institution one day and enter broader society, an event I am sure you enthusiastically look forward to. I must express the genuine hope that you do not enter society for material progress alone, of course you will need to earn enough money so that you and yours will have quality of life. I would strongly urge though that each of you will make a determined effort to be truly non-racist and non-sexist. I promise that this will not be easy. You will also, I am sure, contribute to the continuing struggle to achieve a true democracy in our country fight to destroy our endemic, endemic corruption with every fiber in your being, and that you will yourselves be honest, caring, and sensitive members of our society. The best of luck for the future, and congratulations once again. Thank you very much. i 
Mr. Chancellor, I have the privilege of requesting you to award the following qualifications to the candidates that are introduced to you. Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences, Bachelor's Degrees.
Faculty of Education, bachelor's degrees, postgraduate certificates, postgraduate diplomas, bachelor honors degrees, master's degrees, and doctoral degrees.
Faculty of the Humanities, bachelor's degrees and bachelor's honors degrees, master's degrees and doctoral degrees.
Mr. Chancellor, I have the privilege of requesting you to present the Dean's Medal to the recipient that I introduced to you. Having obtained a Bachelor of Community Development, she is also the student who achieved the best overall results in respect of a four-year bachelor's degree in the Faculty of the Humanities during 2020. Mr. Chancellor, I present Manaha Musiya. Faculty of Natural and Agricultural Sciences, Bachelor's Degrees, Bachelor's Honours Degrees, Master's Degrees and Doctoral Degrees.
Mr. Chancellor, I have the privilege of requesting you to confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy honoris causa upon the candidate that I present to you. Dr. Sipo Mila Pikiana is a business leader with extensive experience, having served in both executive and non-executive capacities on several local and international boards of blue chip companies. He is the founder and chairman of the private investment firms Izingwe Capital and Izingwe Holdings. He is currently chairman of the JSE listed Redefined Properties and non-executive director of the APSA Bank Group. He recently stepped down as chairman of Anglo Gold Ashanti Limited, the world's third largest gold producer. Dr. Pichana serves on the Presidential Jobs Council, is the leader of the business delegation to the National Economic Development and Labor Council, NEDLEC, and he was one of the founding members of the governing body of the Commission for Conciliation, Mediation and Arbitration. His passion for education has seen him serve as Registrar of the University of Fort Hare, Chairperson of the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, NASFES, and he recently retired as Chairperson of the University of Cape Town Council. Mr. Chancellor, I now present Dr. Sipo Mila Pijana and request you to confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy honoris causa upon him. Chancellor and Vice Chancellor, fellow graduate, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen. Honorary qualifications awarded by the investor of the Free State serve to reflect the commitment of the institution to both the academic excellence and human project excellence in the service of humanity. These qualifications are bestowed on the individuals with outstanding academic track records who enjoy international recognition or to individuals, not necessarily academics, whose accomplishments in the fields of science, arts, economics, media, culture, leadership or education have made a difference in the world and whose influence and work may have been of benefit to development in South Africa. The University of the Free State is proud to confer the Doctor of Philosophy honoris causa upon Dr. Sipo Pijana. We are honored to welcome him in the midst of our esteemed honorary Dr. Randy. Welcome Dr. Pijana and thanks very much ladies and gentlemen. Chancellor and Vice-Chancellor of the Universities, Professors Mohale and Peterson, respectively, Chairperson of, and members of the University Council, members of Senate and the academic faculty, fellow graduates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Dumelang Huyedach. I am humbled, honored and deeply touched by this award from such an esteemed institution. I'm particularly pleased that I share this honor today with such luminaries whose contribution to the human endeavor has been a tremendous inspiration not only to me but to so many in the world. I congratulate them as I do congratulate graduates whose years of hard work, including under the unusual and trying circumstances of COVID-19, has earned them handsome rewards. Human achievements are seldom only about those that are being recognized. I must at the outset dedicate this to my family particularly my wife Nkuli, who has steadfastly supported me, particularly in the sometimes lonely and painful parts of my journey. I'd also pay tribute to the many colleagues and business partners and associates who have made my journey that much more lighter by providing support and encouragement at critical junctures. This award comes in the thick of an unprecedented battle for survival recovery and renewal of our economy and those of the world following the disruptive COVID-19 pandemic. As we all know, it isn't over yet and many dangers lay ahead with vulnerable economies likely to be decimated uh, in the process. COVID compounded an already vulnerable economy 
testimony to which has been repeated sovereign rating downgrades by various global rating agencies and high levels of unemployment. Consequently, we face the challenge of ensuring that our pharmaceutical, social and economic response to the pandemic is not only fit for purpose, but sustainable. Business remains gravely concerned about the execution of the procurement and rollout of the vaccines, which are a critical response to this scourge, hence our desperate offer to assist for the sake of our nation. When we established the Business for South Africa initiative, never for once uh, did I imagine the outpouring of human solidarity from the nation's leading corporations, including smaller businesses, to ensure that our people survive and our country lives for another day. Many donated generously financially to the Solidarity Fund, which we, which we inspired. Others converted their facilities to hospitals to accommodate anticipated large numbers of those likely to be um, affected. Others procured health, health kits for their staff and local communities. These included manufacture of sanitizers. There were also donations of food parcels and the negotiation of interim relief measures for many employees and businesses that were to be adversely affected by it all. I'd be remiss if I did not use this opportunity to thank my colleagues in business and our social partners for, this rise, for rising to the occasion and ensuring that we together, in the face of an unprecedented challenge, um, worked, worked well together. Simultaneously, we must condemn those that, not only in government, who saw this as an opportunity to pursue their corrupt endeavors, unscrupulous businesses that claimed terms for their employees but did not pass it on, or those who abused the many government schemes to assist businesses that were in genuine need. Unless the war against corruption is won finally, its disruptive effects on our nation will continue to undermine human progress. An urgent task is to restore an economy that is uh, in depression with contraction that some compare to the World Economic Depression of the 1930s. Unless we move with the requisite urgency and singular purpose, our situation will deteriorate. It is for this reason that we last year tabled a detailed uh, economic recovery plan for consideration by government and our social partners. It is a contribution that benefited from players in every sector of the economy. In it, they tell the nation what would see them risk their scarce capital and invest in our economy. Importantly too, they define themselves as part of a journey to reset the economic trajectory to an inclusive growth path that is not just about the pursuit of profit, but also to chase the dream of an equitable society. The need to implement this has never been more urgent. We are fortunate to be pursuing this agenda at the time, uh, at the time as the continent adopts the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, ACFTA. For as long as Africa accounts for only 2% of world trade will remain condemned to poverty and the periphery of development. Business has to play a pivotal role in promoting cross-border trade, ease of movement of people, particularly um, uh, uh, Africans who are skilled. We cannot continue to export our skills to regions of the world that has these in abundance because of our xenophobic uh, policies, paranoia and ignorance. As the chairman of the World Economic Forum's Regional Action Group on Africa, I've been encouraged by the enthusiastic uh, enthusiasm of our continent's business leadership uh, 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 to rise to the challenge facing our economies. Africa is projected to grow at the rate of about 4% this year, albeit from a low base. We are keenly aware that, they push, that to push back the frontiers of underdevelopment, we need higher levels of growth. And in thanking you uh, once more, I can only emphasize my hope that we 
can continue to count on, on your an, an endowment of education, research and innovation to meaningfully transform African economies. Thank you very much. Most distinguished graduates, participants, honorary doctorate recipients and guests. Today is a special day indeed, as an honorary doctorate will be awarded to an individual who has contributed profoundly to the progress of society. Dr. Sipo Mila Pijana. Dr. Pijana's commitment and contribution to the transformation of the business landscape in South Africa are unparalleled, particularly at a time when South Africans feel deeply wounded by the extremes of corruption facing the country. He sets a true example as a respected leader by actively engaging in the pursuit of service and transformation for the benefit of society. Congratulations, Dr. Pijana. We salute you. It was the South African traditional healer and author, Baba Vosama Zulu Kredomutwa, who opined, I weep even now when Eurocentric education is being fed to our children, fed in order to make them Afrophobes, creatures that hate and despise their motherland, which look down in contempt upon their own people, because this is what all European educated black people do. They despise Africa and all she stands for. And they are in contempt of the culture of her people. They are still, even now, doing the colonialists' dirty work for them. Because if you want to destroy the culture of a nation, you must brainwash the youth of that nation and make them do your dirty work for you. The death of a father of four, Mtogozisi, Edwin Ntumba, at the hands of the police, during a recent student protest in Bramfontein, is an opportune moment to pause and reflect on the eighth of the ten principles of the Freedom Charter as adopted at the Congress of the People at Clip Town on the 16th of June, 1955. It boldly declared that the doors of learning and culture shall be opened, that the government should discover, develop, and encourage national talent for the enhancement of our cultural life, that all the cultural treasures of mankind should be open to all through the free exchange of books, ideas, and contact with other lands, that the aim of education should be to teach the youth to love their people and their culture, to honor human brotherhood, liberty, and peace, that education should be free, compulsory, universal, and equal for all children. That higher education and technical training should be opened to all by means of state allowances and scholarships awarded on the basis of merit. That adult illiteracy should be ended by a mass state education plan. That teachers should have all the rights of other citizens. And that the color bar in cultural life, sport, and education should be abolished. Universities were initially created to connect people. In our country, after 27 years of democracy, we have succeeded in increasing the percentage of students attending institutions of higher learning from 7 to 11 percent. By definition, it makes you a small part of the elite, and I hope that you will resist the temptation to be elitist and therefore exclusionary. For us, the biggest injustice we faced as a country pre-1994 was exclusion. If the year 2020 was the year of the digital revolution, please join us in making 2021 the year of the arc, bringing people in to empower university to become inclusive centers of excellence, to be awake to persistent inequalities and how these continue to shape a sense of belonging ownership, identity, access, language, symbols, attitudes, and expectations. To support the emergence of institutions that nurture young people to come out of these institutions, not only with hard skills, but with a sense of social justice, critical thinking, and curiosity. To conceptualize ethical frameworks that will guide societal engagement with universities. To promote public ownership of higher education institutions 
where the public recognizes its role as both beneficiaries and stakeholders in the accomplishments of universities. To develop a social justice approach to higher education where universities propel democratic engagement and advocate for academic freedom, which nurtures success of the higher education system through assessments of different perspectives. Help us in our pursuit of equality. To inform, to inspire, and ignite new efforts to achieve a world where eventually every woman and every man, every black person and every white person can look forward to fair and equal treatment. A world in which being a woman or a black person is not a barrier to becoming a leader in any field, nor a factor contributing to negative perceptions of an individual's leadership. Equality is something that both affects everyone and has the potential to benefit everyone. We all lose out if we dismiss it as simply a student's, women's, or black people's issue. Much more is needed to achieve equality than mere compliance with the law. All the great leaders have one characteristic in common, namely the willingness to unequivocally confront the major anxiety of the people in their time. This, and not much else, is the essence of leadership. Many of you had to overcome a lot during your journey to get here today. You had your own personal challenges, challenges inside and outside the lecture rooms. Most of the year was spent adapting to a new and a better normal and dealing with the challenges brought on by the pandemic. Some of you have lost loved ones to the COVID-19 pandemic, while others have had to deal with funding studies, or even both. The list is endless. Many of you are the first in your families to reach this milestone. So even in the midst of the disruptive year that you have experienced, you have earned this moment, and you should be extremely proud. Graduates of the University of the Free State, Remember that you are now all role models. Your involvement in what matters most in this country, your willingness to act against injustice and inequality, and your courage to stand up for what is right, these actions will define you and speak volumes. Our country needs your leadership, and many have been waiting for the likes of you to come along. You hold so much power. You have earned your degree, and it is now up to you to use it. Being a change agent, defender of democracy, and social justice activist requires immense grounding and self-awareness. Make sure that you surround yourself with real people in real communities while inculcating kindness, empathy, passion, and awareness of the real issues. Change requires activism. And this activism can only come with clear strategy, action, and mobilizing. Many of you are already doing this. You have already started on the grounds of the university campuses. No one is better positioned than you to take activism to the next level. Also, be reminded that none of this can be done alone. Align yourself with those who have a common cause and carry along those who have been left out and those who are struggling. It is up to you to build bridges, remain morally astute, and grow your coalitions if you wish to tackle and complete the unfinished goals of this country and bring about a better world. Congratulations to all our graduates and honorary doctorate recipient. May you have continued success in all your endeavors.
Congratulations to all our graduates on this wonderful achievement, as well as to students with distinctions who have excelled in their various fields of study, most distinguished graduates and participants. This concludes the proceedings for this morning. By virtue of the power vested in me as chancellor, I hereby dissolve this congregation of the University of the Free State.